A litotes is a deliberate understatement done by denying what something isn't. Okay, think about this statement for a few seconds. It's a double negative, and these sorts of things require a bit more introspection than usual. And speaking of introspection, I got some new glasses. Do these look nice? Oh, uh, what's that? They don't look bad. And there's your litotes. Here's the scale of how my new frames look. We've got amazing over here to the right and silly to the left. By denying that they look silly, we leave open the possibility of everything to the right. And that's why I'm suggesting that litotes is an understatement. You're not saying that my glasses look amazing, but you're suggesting that. The word litotes comes from the Greek litotes, meaning simplicity. And over time, the meaning changed to affirming something by means of an understatement. And in truth, using a litotes draws attention to the idea a bit more than simply stating the affirmative because of the complexity of thought required to unpack it. And because it leaves the actual meaning up to interpretation and really imagination by only obliquely defining it, and we greatly emphasize it thus. And that's the point of litotes, to bring emphasis to something while skillfully avoiding direct mention. It's kind of amazing, or should I say, not unimpressive. So often a litotes will involve a double negative, and it's important to remember that most of them will be double negatives. Not bad implies good enough. Not too shabby suggests nice. Not never gives us sometimes. But a litotes doesn't always have to be a double negative. It's officially just an understatement. So in Robert Frost's poem, Fire and Ice, well, let me read it. It's not too long. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I've tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if I had to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to say that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. We end on a litotes, a bit of a contrast between the superlative nature of great in the penultimate verse and the understatement of just sufficing. By the way, I'm an ice guy myself. We see litotes in ancient works all the time. In Latin, there are standard phrases like non nullus, sometimes joined together in one word, literally translated not not any, but it's used to mean some. Non nihil is literally not nothing, meaning something. But let's look at litotes in full sentences. Cicero decries doctissimos homines non nimis nore publica versatos. Very learned men, not too much versed in the Republic. The non nimis implies a very little, even though it's literally not too much. In Virgil's Aeneid, we have another litotes when Aeneas sees a young man in the underworld whose brow is described as light daparum. The brow is literally not happy enough, but we should understand this to mean very sad. Ovid uses a litotes when he describes Syrinx, uh, non semel et saturo se lucerat illa sequentes, and not once had she escaped satyrs pursuing her, meaning very often had she done so. One more example. Virgil describes the island of Tenedos, just off the coast of Troy, as a statio male fida carinis, a harbor badly trusty for ships, or better to just say, bad. Those are examples of litotes, a deliberate understatement, often a double negative, but that's not a requirement. There are not a few examples of litotes that don't involve two negatives.